Hello, my name is Veronica Bedinker, and I'm a fourth year medical student at the University of Miami. The patient is a 79 year old Hispanic female with a history of invasive lobular carcinoma of the left breast with recurrence in the chest wall and known bone metastases, presenting with dyspepsia, generalized abdominal pain, and diarrhea. She also had a history of chronic gastritis. Here we see side by side axial CTs of the abdomen and pelvis with intravenous contrast obtained during the portal venous phase. The abdominal CT demonstrates small volume ascites, denoted by the white arrowhead, as well as peritoneal reflection thickening, denoted by the blue arrowhead. The pelvic CT demonstrates diffuse thickening of the stomach walls involving the distal body and antrum. This is denoted by the blue arrow. Here we have a coronal CT image of the abdomen and pelvis with IV contrast administration acquired during the portal venous phase. The CT shows diffuse thickening of stomach walls involving the distal body and antrum, represented by the blue arrow, and loss of gastric rugae, represented by the yellow arrow. The double contrast spot image of the stomach on the left was taken with the patient in the supine position and demonstrates a loss of folds in the gastric body, as shown by the yellow arrow, and narrowing of the lumen in the stomach antrum, as shown by the black arrow, with no sign of obstruction. Sclerotic changes of the thoracic vertebral bodies were also identified. The single contrast spot image on the right of the screen was taken with the patient in a supine position, showing narrowing of the lumen of the stomach antrum, denoted by the black arrow, with no obstruction. Here we have a coronal fused PET CT image demonstrating diffuse FTG uptake of the stomach walls. This is shown by the white arrow. The final diagnosis of this case was gastric metastatic breast cancer. The patient's history of metastatic invasive lobular carcinoma of the breast, her symptoms, and the imaging must raise suspicion for gastric metastases, despite its lower prevalence relative to primary gastric malignancy. Upper GI study showed loss of folds of the gastric body and narrowing of the lumen in the antrum with no obstruction. CT showed diffuse thickening of the stomach wall involving the distal body and antrum. Endoscopy identified diffuse infiltration of the stomach walls with loss of gastric rugae. Finally, histopathological analysis of the stomach biopsy confirmed the diagnosis of metastatic lobular carcinoma of the breast. The two primary differential diagnoses for this case were chronic gastritis and gastric adenocarcinoma. Gastritis presents with thickening of the stomach folds and prominent area gastrope on upper GI study, along with mucosal and rugal fold hypertrophy on CT. Hypoattenuation of the submucosa can also be observed. Gastric adenocarcinoma can present with three imaging patterns on CT. Focal mural thickening with or without ulceration, as a polypoid or intramural mass, or with diffuse hypoattenuating wall thickness. The latter pattern, reflecting diffuse submucosal infiltration, can also be observed in metastases from breast cancer, such as this case, or other conditions, including amyloidosis or sarcoidosis. Adjacent stranding and adenopathy can also be observed in advanced gastric adenocarcinoma. The take-home messages of this case are as follows. Symptoms of gastric metastases include nausea, vomiting, epigastric pain, and anorexia, which may be nonspecific. Gastric metastases usually present on CT as smooth submucosal masses, diffuse gastric wall thickening, or as distinct polypoid nodules. Gastric metastases from invasive lobular carcinoma will often demonstrate diffuse thickening and enhancement of the gastric wall on CT, loss of gastric rugae, and narrowing of the gastric lumen on upper GI study. Thank you for your time.